Welcome everyone. Happy Tuesday. We are here for things that make you go mmm. And today we're talking pride. The purpose of things that make you go mmm is to talk about things that really get us juicy in our lives, things that make us happy, things that make us uh, want to be in relationship, things that are sexy, and all of those things blend together. And today, as I mentioned, we are talking pride. I changed last week, uh, we talked about touch, touch, feel. And I had mentioned at the end that this week was going to be about decisiveness. And ironically, I changed my mind. <laughs> so I was not decisive about the title or about the topic of decisiveness. We'll do that next week. I wanted to talk about pride today because, of course, June is Pride Month. And we're halfway through the month. And, of course, with COVID restrictions and all that kind of stuff, there's not a lot of celebration going on. Uh, but I wanted to talk about um, pride as a uh, as a group, as an LGBTQ2 plus celebration, and also as a personal uh, part of who you are and why it's important. So let's start, as we do usually do, with a definition. So pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own, own achievements, the achievements of those with whom one is closely related. So pride is not necessarily about you. It's also about those that you work with, about your family, about those around you and, and, and when they're doing well. I and mean, if you have, have a kid and they've done well in school, of course you're proud. If they get the job they've always wanted, you're proud. If your work team uh, gets to a whole new level and um, uh, like, like so say creates a vaccine, <laughs> of course you're proud. Uh, so it's, it's a deep, deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from an achievement, whether it's your own or uh, someone who's important to you or a group that you are a part of. It's also consciousness of one's own dignity. Uh, so that's that's just pride in who you are, in in yourself, in what you do, in in um, uh, uh, in everything about yourself. Well, maybe not everything, but <laughs> it's uh, it's it's you you realize that you you have a dignity, that you have a purpose, that you have a specialness about you. And the last one is confidence and self-respect as expressed by members of a group. So that would be more in line with the whole pride celebrations. Uh, any group, any uh, conglomeration of people that share similar backgrounds, similar um, struggles, similar opinions, um, just the confidence and self-respect of that group. Typically one that has been socially marginalized on the basis of their shared identity, culture, and experience. So that could be the LGBTQ2 plus people, that could be people of, an, of a race, that could be uh, handicapped people, it could be um, all different kinds of subsections of humanity that um, have been marginalized for one reason or another. So that gives us a groundwork for what pride is. Now, one thing that gets confused a lot is pride and arrogance. Uh, and they are very similar, but they are very different. Um, arrogance had a very simple definition, overbearing pride. So if there is there's healthy pride and there's unhealthy pride and arrogance would be unhealthy pride and arrogance usually stems from a sense of, of self-doubt and so you are trying to overcome that and compensate for it by being overly uh, prideful and arrogant so let's just compare the two for a second healthy pride would be when you're authentic and you're realistic 
about your own abilities. An unhealthy or arrogant arrogance would be more hubristic. So hubris is the um, over proud prideful is, is basically what hubris is. And that's when you're just when you have a distorted view of your importance, your um, your abilities, and you're narcissistic. And you often fail because uh, you have an an over inflated view of what your what's what's what your what's possible for you. And so you t go way beyond your ability levels and then you fall on your, on your face. And then of course, if you're arrogant, you make excuses for it. And I don't, as I'm going through this, I am uh, reminded of a politician <laughs> that may come to your minds as well. Uh, healthy pride is self-confidence and a can do attitude. You know, you're going, for, you're still going for stuff when you're proud, when you, when you have pride, because of course, you know what you are capable of. So you're not going to stop yourself you're not going to be fearful you there's always that yes i can do it i can do it uh, but without the overinflated feeling um the unhealthy or arrogant is driven due to poor self-confidence and self-doubt so they're always trying to prove themselves so they're going too far doing too much or um doing things that that aren't in their skill set just to prove that they are better than they than they think they are uh, healthy is has a quiet self-assurance. Unhealthy has braggadocio. So pride, people who have pride will very, will will often t tell you about why they're what they're proud of, but they don't feel the need to um, what's to dominate a conversation or to break in and say, oh, well, you did that, but I did this. <laughs> you know, the braggad the braggadocio comes out in the arrogance, in the unhealthy uh, pr pride. A really important part about healthy pride is you include and appreciate others. So th that's the whole team approach, the feeling of um, satisfaction from others, other achievements. It's not all about you. It's about the others who helped you get there. And the unhealthy side is you put others down and it's all about me. It's all about what I did. It's all about how great I am. Forget about all those other people that were on the team that did a lot of work that um, helped the whole thing happen. Uh, healthy, you lift others up. And unhealthy, you're more antisocial and, anta and antagonistic. So you're fighting against other people all the time and the unhealthy pride. And healthy pride allows you to inspire and lead versus being a bully. So if you're unsure of whether you have pride or if you are have arrogance, those are a few things to uh, look at. And if you don't have pride at all, everybody has something to be proud of. Everybody has something that they are great at, that they have a right to pat themselves on the back about. And pride is a very sexy thing. It's a mm, 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 mm thing because it shows confidence. It shows uh, a, an, an awareness of oneself. It shows your authenticity, your realism, your just everything bolsters up that pride because you know that you are a worthy person. And when it comes to being worthy, let me just flip my page here. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are seen by some as less, that are seen by some as unworthy, as, as uh, dangerous, as... Um, not sometimes not even human you know they're just they're put down they are not given rights they're not um seen as um as good as others uh it goes it can be seen all through history slavery genocides 
um, uh, men and women, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just everywhere. It's all over the place. And so back in 1969 at Stonewall Inn in New York City, there was a riot. Uh, and it was because the police were trying to break up a group of um, others of, of the gay, the queer community. And they decided not to put up with it anymore. And a riot started. And it was, it was a big deal because normally people would scatter. They would um, put up with the abuse. They would hide. They would clog the whole closeting themselves. Um, terminology was, was very, very strong because that's the way the queer community needed to survive, was to set themselves apart and hide. And on that day, June 28, 1969, they decided not to do that anymore. Some select individuals decided not to do that anymore, which inspired many, many others to follow suit. And so the first official Pride celebration was held in June 1970, only a year later. And it's been going strong ever since, 51 years of marginalized, uh, people marginalized for their sexuality have stood up and said, we're not taking this anymore. And it's so, 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 as you can see, <laughs> makes me so excited to see people standing up for themselves. And um, there have been all kinds of changes over that time. There's still lots to go, whether it's for the LGBTQ two plus or others, um, as we were talking about last week, the Muslim community, the, um, you know, other religions, other races, other, even other denominations within religions, you know, it's just crazy how many things we can find to <laughs> make ourselves separate and make us not take pride in the joy and love that we can have with each other. Um, and within all of these, uh, like just within the LGBTQ2+, for example, I mean, that title keeps getting longer and longer because there's so many uh, different things that can be, different ways that sexuality can be um, labeled. And it can get really overwhelming. I just read a post from a woman who said, you know, I call myself bi-curious but I'm not really interested in sex with women. So I'm told that I'm not allowed to be bi-curious. So what should I call myself? And a lot of the responses were, call yourself whatever you want. <laughs> you know, it's you, you, you're the one. So it doesn't matter if you strictly fit into this label or that label, own, own it for yourself. Take pride in who you are and choose whatever works for you. Choose no label, choose, multiple labels, choose whatever works. Take pride in who you are, in your sexuality, in your sexiness, in uh, everything about you. And um, it's, it's, it's really crazy how we feel like we need to put labels on each other because it's not, we're all, like, like we said last week, we're all human. We all have fears, we all have joy, we all have things to be proud of. We all have similar stories, similar struggles, and it doesn't matter what the label is that you put on yourself or that society puts on you. We are all the same when it comes right down to it. Um, let's talk for a moment about the pride flag. Uh, it, it has changed a little bit this year. I don't know if you've um, if you might have been looking around at pride flags, they used to just be the colors, just the stripes of colors, but now they've got kind of a triangle and then the stripes of colors. And it's because colors have been added. <laughs> and, and there's a reason behind every single color. And I'm just gonna go through them right now because I think the meanings are, are quite lovely. Red is for life, makes sense. Blood is red, red is life. Orange is for healing. And 
uh, as anyone can tell you who has been in a marginalized group. And I, I, I let me check myself for a second here. I am a white woman. <laughs> I have a lot of who lives in Canada. I have a lot of privilege, and I totally get that. And and at the same time, I also appreciate the struggles of others. And I really, really wish for healing for everyone, no matter what your label, no matter where you are. Uh, yellow is for sunshine, which we actually got a little bit of today. Green is for nature. Again, totally makes sense. <laughs> green trees, green grass, green plants, nature. Blue is for harmony, bringing all the different labels together. Indigo is for serenity. It's sometimes very hard to get to a serene place, and yet it is possible. Purple is spirit, the spirit of the queer community. And <laughs> by God, they've got a lot of spirit. <laughs> and I consider myself bisexual. Um, so I am, I guess, technically <laughs> LGB, bisexual, TQ. And, um, and I have many, many queer friends and I just love them to death. And, and I really admire how they love themselves, how they love others and how they um, come together as a community, as a love, lovely, lovely spirit, just as the rest of us uh, need to do. Uh, pink is for sex. Very cool. Turquoise is magic. I love that. And magic is included. And this year, two, two colors have been added. Black for diversity, because of course there is diversity within every community and uh, with all of the Black Lives Matter and everything that has really ramped up this last year, they decided to add black. And brown is for inclusivity. And I love that. I love that they've added that and that's what it means. Because um, I can't say it enough. We all need to be included. <clears throat> whether you are part of the LGBTQ2 plus community, whether you are part of a religious community, whether you are um, a different color, a different ability level, a different anything. We are all different and yet we are all the same. And so inclusivity is huge. The key to pride, whether we're talking about pride in yourself, pride month, pride um, for the queer community, the key is to be who you are and to accept others as they are. That really truly is true pride. It leads to inclusiveness and acceptance and lifting each other up. And it brings in every color of the rainbow. So take pride in, take pride in yourself, take pride in your community, take pride in others standing up for themselves and just find ways to have that healthy pride to be that booster of others, to lift each other up, to lead, to inspire, and to bring this world more mm, to bring your life more mm, and to make all and everyone included so that we can all go mm, together. Thank you so much. I. I feel I, I want to leave it there. I don't want, I'm not going to promote my book. I'm not going to promote the website. I just want you to sit with that, to be proud of who you are, to be proud of those you love, and to find ways to be proud of those you may not understand. Happy Tuesday and stay sexy, everyone. Happy Pride.